Well, there we have the largest clothesline, or definitely the largest hills hoist clothesline in Australia. Um, basically, uh, Gilbert Toyne, he um, didn't really get a lot of credit, but uh, he came up with this idea. Like uh, my nan, I saw her with a, uh, a line between uh, two trees, and um, she needed a prop to uh, either, uh, one, she put the washing on the line, and then uh, use that prop to pop it up so it would get the nice fresh air up there and keep all the clothes off the off the ground. So um, Gilbert Coyne saw the same problem with uh, his mum and came up with an idea of um, this clothesline. Sadly, it was around about 1914, there was a lot of war going on and things, so he was out to war. The idea was um, never really fully uh, caught on and um, and then when he came back, there was the uh, Great Depression as well. That was about 1929. And uh, one in three Australians were out of work. So there uh, wasn't a lot happening about then. So, um, yeah, I think he went, uh, there was another war, of course. So, yeah, around about that 1939, um, a guy by the name of Lance Hill stepped in and uh, took over the idea and uh, produced this. Now, he also used a lot of, um, when the war finished, he actually used a lot of... Um, I think around the Sydney Harbour there was a lot of pipe and things that was used in the uh, capture of uh, well, the, the protection of the harbour from submarines so he used a lot of that pipe in the uh, manufacture of um, the Hills Hoist. Um, it has 65 metres of uh, drying space on about nine lines so uh, super um, a, a good use of a uh, small amount of space and things so it was uh, available in a lot of Australian households around here I think uh, in total around the world or something, they ended up with some figures of like 5 million sold a year. Um, it's also been um, pretty important for uh, a lot of events. Uh, the Sydney 2000, I think it was uh, the uh, Hills Hoist was featured a lot in the uh, opening ceremony, I think it was, um, with little robot Hills Hoists driving around the place. Um, a lot of drinking games. They used to tag a, uh, they used to call them goon bags here, um, those little uh, cardboard cartons with a bladder in it. They used to peg a, a bit of alcohol in it and swing it all the way, way around and if it stopped uh, underneath the person, uh, the person was underneath, had a, had a bit of a drink to catch up on. Um, it was uh, used as a shade, just to put a, um, a, you know, like a duvet or you know, like a blanket or something over the top. You could have a nice little umbrella, so a little shade. Um, and also, uh, I think an employee or something like that, he uh, left here and he went over to the uh, UK and uh, he had Hammersmith, I think it was. And uh, the uh, Hills Hoist was used as a, uh, um, a, it was on their logo, on their, um, what do you call it? <laughs> it featured on their, uh, their shirt, jerseys and things. So there you have it, the Hills Hoist. Sadly not being manufactured here anymore, it's uh, overseas. Um, but uh, this place here's uh, been run by uh, it's uh, all on steel. A good little spot to have a look at here in uh, O'Sutherland's Beach, I believe it is. Population 2000. Anyway, we're going to go back to the van. Just uh, a little way down from the uh, famous clothesline, the Hills Hoist. Uh, we're down to uh, Port Wollonga, I think they call the place. Um, and this little vantage point that we're at, We've got some nice little caves, hopefully we can make our way down there, try and find out. There's the Port Wollonga pylons, uh, but way in the distance, uh, probably the next beach around the corner. It's quite funny, I was um, driving down the road and um, the, uh, the sign said Australia's first, I think it said unclad beach. And I'm going like, oh, is that paved footpath, road? I said, dude, look it up, what's, what's an unclad beach? <laughs> yeah, it was Australia's first nudist beach. So, uh, mus muslim, I think it is. Um, it's bay around. And, um, yeah, clothing optional. And uh, apparently it's beautiful. The limestone cliffs and things like that. So, uh, yeah, this, this is a nice little stretch of water here. Now, now down here we've got the, uh, a plaque for the Star of Greece. So the plaque is dedicated in memory of the crews that lost their lives during the wrecking of the three-masted iron sailing ship, the Star of Greece, during a violent storm in the 13th of July, 1888. The shipwreck is located one kilometer north of this point. Um, yeah, so there you go, the Star of Greece. 
was uh, out there somewhere. So uh, yeah, beautiful little, uh, I don't know if they want to see me all the time. I'll swap the camera around and you can check out the view. So there we have it, these beautiful cliffs. And you can just see the pylons of the Wollonga Port, I think it used to be. And then you've got this lovely expanse during low tide. And then further up the end there, around probably the next bay is the Muslim unclad beach. Down from the, uh, the vans up here, and uh, got the uh, those little uh, pylon, the old pylon piers there, and um, didn't have to go far to find the caves. So there they are, stuck up along the edge here. Um, I think they were used as storage, so obviously something to do with the pier and uh, little boats or something like that could go in there. I don't know too much about it, but um, yeah, it's pretty neat. Just a, a half a dozen of them there. Go back a, a reasonable way. Got a little bit of reinforcing and a couple of them there for a bit of structural integrity. So, beautiful little caps. What a neat beach too. Really pretty. This one's a, a big one up here. So it's from the, the tide mark that came in. But, wow, look at this it goes back a fair way that one. Pretty neat. So there you have it. The uh, Wollonga Caves. It's pretty neat. Watch the northern lights flash Took a photograph on a Paris street Have you ever climbed a tall tree? Asked someone for mercy Gave something away that wasn't free I don't wanna get a vision of you stuck in my head Because I know that you were meant to be wilder Another night of television while you're lying in bed It's slowly gonna be the death of you So there you have it. It's been a pretty eventful start back onto the road again. This uh, Wollonga's quite neat. It's really nice here at low tide. So you get to see the old uh, caves really, really well. The neat formations on the top. It's really neat. And of course the, uh, we've got the pylons here at low tide. It's good as well. Anyway, we better start making tracks to our accommodation for the night. We're heading to Rapid Bay. Check it out. See it. <laughs> Damn you.